today, because you had asked me to prepare, what can somebody invest in today in any of our markets where they can ride out the next three to five years? And we always go back to there's always pre-construction. Great. Let's find a, a great developer. Or there's one of the biggest ones that we've talked about for 20, 30 years that, yeah. again, the government had the balls to, 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 to dabble in to lease the own. Yes. So if we're going to have the government come into the party, let's talk about lease the own. <laughs> well, it's interesting. We all often say, and, and I know that you're on that same page, is that there's no bad time to invest in real estate. There's just the wrong tactics or the wrong strategy within that current economic real estate time. And so, you know, back to lease to own or rent to own, that is a strategy that really can be put to work in this kind of an environment. And uh, it's not difficult to learn. And it's really, uh, if you're guided by somebody like you or you, somebody on your team that understands that whole lease to own concept and what that al allows people to do in terms of putting their money to work, that's the kind of strategy we want to take on and use in these kind of economic times. Yeah. So, so for anyone out there, let's say you have, whether it's 100, 200K, whatever the case, you're looking to get into a piece of real estate. By deploying this strategy, up to February of this year, lease to own was the ugly sister because the market was going up 10, 12, 15, 20% a year. And people knew it. Yeah. As, as long as money at the bank is free, you're going to see this kind of grow. Yeah. But the minute the money has now went up seven times in six months, lease to own is going to be not your best friend. There's going to be a mad rush to do these deals. There's not going to be enough tenant owners uh, per se. So I do want to cover all this off for all those who know Lee Stone, it might be a little bit of a refresher. Uh, and, I, and if I can, if you can give me kind of the mic for 10 minutes to just take them through the basics, the high level of the strategy. Dude, let's do it. That's why we're here. That's why I got you on the show, buddy. So Christina was kind enough to prepare this for me. I just gave her my last case study. I told her to just pull out some, uh, some fact that I can just speak to uh, to the, the Real Estate Investment Network community. So investing to win through a recession, I've used this title before because the only presentations I'm doing right now are surrounding three to five year plays. So anybody looking to speculate in this market is not going to be represented by my office. So unless you're buying your own home or your house hacking, meaning renting half of it, living in half of it, don't come to me looking for a one year exit and holding me accountable to what happens to you. It just mm -hmm. won't happen. So we need the, the we need the fundamentals in place, and we need at least a regular real estate clock on it, which is three to five years at the yep. very least. So what is lease to own? Lease to own is by far the most traditionally lucrative strategy in real estate. It is where an investor, in this case, you, any one of you are going to be purchasing a property that somebody else wants. Mr. Patrick Franti is going to be our tenant owner today. So Patrick gives my office a call, says, I want to buy a house. Simeon, the broker, takes uh, Patrick out. We look at a house. Within a couple of days, we find out that Patrick went through a divorce or bruised his credit or all the different things that take somebody's credit credit score uh, or resources down. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, Patrick says, Simeon, I have 5%. Can I get a mortgage like anyone else? No, Patrick, you can't because your credit score is 592. It needs to be 700 for you to qualify 5%. Okay, Simeon, what are my options? I'm going to say, Patrick, my good friend Susan right here has the money and she's going to buy the house and put it in her name. Susan is any one real estate investment network person watching right now. You are Susan. So you are going to buy the house that Patrick will live in. As Patrick is going to live there, he's going to give Susan 5%. Here you go, Susan. This is yep. my down payment to you. 
We bought the house today for $500,000. You, Susan, you investor, put down $100,000, took a $400,000 mortgage. Patrick gave you 5%. He gave you 25K down payment, which goes against your down payment, or you put it in your pocket and go to Vegas, do whatever you you want to do. But he put down $25,000, so he's... He has skin in the game. Your mortgage payment, let's just call it a thousand bucks for fun. Your mortgage, your his rental, Patrick's rent is going to be fifteen hundred because it's a thousand for rent and five hundred dollars for uh, it, contributing to his down payment. Yes. So he is saving money automatically every month, but that is your cash flow. It has nothing to do with what the purpose of it is. You're bringing in fifteen hundred, and your five hundred dollars in the black every single month is a result of the deal structure. You also agreed upon because you're doing this for him. You, you, Susan, you investor, are going to take a fixed exit. Patrick is going to go on a plan to fix his credit. Patrick is saving money for his down payment as every month goes along. But in three years from now, or in four years from now, or in five years from now, depending on what term you negotiate, what yes. you are looking for, Patrick is going to buy this property at a fixed price. That fixed price might be 5% a year. That fixed price could be 6% a year. It could be a fixed number. Patrick buy this in five years for 650 k Come hell or high water. Yeah. That's a dangerous strategy to do, by the way, mm-hmm. because you're you're pricing out the market and your appraisal and his appraisal may not come and it might be a bad deal in default. We'll get to the savviness of it later and, or experience of it later. Mm-hmm. But tying the property to market might be wise to do in a rising tide. Going with a fixed kind of average approach. What's the 40-year average in the market that you're in? 4.2%. Use that. Mm-hmm. Don't be greedy. Be smart, because you want your data, your appraisal, your banker, and ultimately Patrick to succeed. Mm-hmm. If we go up by five percent a year, and we do a four-year deal, if it was worth five hundred thousand today. Next year is worth five and a quarter. The year after, not even compounding. We can compound if you want to. We don't have to. Let's just do the math easy. 550, 575, 600. Yep. Your 100,000 initial investment, your down payment in four years has doubled Mm -hmm. while enjoying positive cash flow, while enjoying a tenant who is actually living in their own home, not destroying your home. Yep. That if anything were to happen to Patrick from emergency, to life, to death, to anything, the house is in your name. It's still your if house. Patrick defaults, it is what it is. I'm so yeah. sorry. Take care. All is well. Re-rent it. Keep it. Sell it. Do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you executed on a deal in a market where somebody wanted the property. They gave you cash in hand to come in. Not yeah, you can't you can't again. step over that twenty five thousand dollar that option payment. It's your money, so so it, it's just the the lowest risk possible for a landlording play. Yeah, you're helping another human being attain home ownership. You are profiting through the entire exercise in the twenty to twenty five percent per annum territory. Mm-hmm. If we were to use the time value of money and do an IRR analysis, you're typically over 35%. Yeah. Because of the cash flow every month and all the different things. But to keep this simple, lease to own on a 90% basis will double your investment in four to five years. You know what I uh, what I've learned over the years as well, Simeon, and I'm sure you recognize it as well. So what we know is we've got a lot of immigration coming into Canada. So first off, there's a lot of tenant buyer possibilities just in the immigration. 
And one of the things in that immigration is that it takes people a couple of years to find out where they want to actually live culturally. These are things that, you know, as investors, we have to consider. But, you know, for those investors who are coming in and understand the culture, because let's say they are from India, let's say they are from uh, Ukraine, uh, you know, where they start to understand their people because that's their culture, they know the nuances. So if they're investors, they can actually serve their cultural clients by investing and saying, that is who I want to support. And it's very, very effective. And you know what? And it doesn't matter what nationality, what culture, I use those as a couple of examples, but I've seen it many, many times. And uh, you know, think about a little Italy. So if we had a bunch of immigrants again coming in from Italy, guess what? If you're, a, if you're Italian and you're an investor, guess what? You're going to be able to serve those clients, speak that language, understand that culture, know where they want to live, and uh, it really is uh, an effective investment strategy when your culture is your client. And you're a housing provider. Yes. You're not, we're not scum lords. And in, in, like, we're talking ab- about using your capital for extreme profit with extreme yes. community involvement. Yes. Love so, it. So, it's one of the absolute best strategies in any day, but during a recession, buying yourself right now a property with a tenant who wants to be there and pay you and get all these things done the way I just described them earlier in a very colorful way uh, yeah. for everybody to kind of feel the context of it uh, yeah. is a fantastic strategy. It's going to take you three to five years out. And at that point, I think we're going to be in a completely different uh, landscape, uh, investment landscape, where you can uh, exit this investment completely and go into something new or the same thing again. And what I love about all of this is we wind these things down, uh, Simeon, because you and I could talk about this stuff forever, is that REC Canada is also experts in that lease to own strategy. So it's not like you as the investor have to know and have the answers. As a matter of fact, you're working with an investor focused brokerage and group of people that understand these intimate details of how to be successful doing that. So uh, thanks for sharing that strategy today, uh, uh, Simeon. I love it. 